I could live in this. I could live in this. Really, the riches that are here. Quite a lot of them are people that I know or knew. They're very tight in there. Street fiddling, Margaret Barry. Ah, oh, look at her, the old lady. <laughs> Margaret Berry uh, and I, we didn't cross swords, but we were both women singers with banjos. And uh, she didn't have much time for me. She went on tour in America, in Boston, which is the home of the Boston Irish. And this guy stands up in the front row, he says, you're a disgrace to Ireland, you're a disgrace to Ireland. So Maggie, apparently, she jumped down off of the stage and she hit him with her banjo. <laughs> Oh, and she broke the head, the, the, the skin of it. <laughs> oh, Maggie was a trip. She was a trip. Oh, oh, look, 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 look. Wonderful to see this again. Absolutely lovely. Singing the Fishing, the first radio ballad. Up jumped the air in the king of the sea, says D to the skipper, look under your lee singing. In case you don't know what a radio ballad is, essentially it's a tapestry of sound. It lasts an hour and it has four elements. It has the recordings of, in this case, the fishermen and their, and their wives. There were the songs that Ewan McCall made out of the speech. Then there was the instrumentation, which I was responsible for, and then the sound effects. There's no feeling like coming into a harbour with a good catch of fish. There's no feeling like it, especially if you're in a boat like we used to be with a good crew. The you purpose come. was to show the effect of work on the people. And for the first time in the BBC's history, other than using parody versions of Paddy the Irishman and, and, and Dick the Yorkshire Miner, they were to speak for themselves, which hit a lot of aggression from the higher-ups in the BBC. But it hit the public really strongly. It made people realize how rich that the language was, and even more important than that, how embodied in truth. Now these are, these are the different formats. This is what Topic used to do with me, used to make little, little records like this. You'd probably find some of mine in there. And then they made the 10 inches. To see all these different formats and know that I lived through them, that's quite amazing. In 80 years you can live through so many different ways of, of putting down the, the human voice. How do you feel about streaming and the technology now? Well, I'm afraid I like something that you can handle. I f foresee in the future a time when there will be such catastrophic weather and things happening to the human race that we won't have electricity. So I think going over to everything disappeared into a cloud is very perilous for the human race. And we are racing to do it, and we think we're so smart. Looks familiar? Yeah, that is. It's one of the, uh, the Columbia selection. I'm a Fulham waver, as many a one knows. Alan Lomax was extraordinary. Great big man who absolutely adored collecting folk music. I'm astounded that he ever organized himself well enough for all of the things that he did. His signature uh, sign that he had been anywhere was an analog tape with the tail hanging out. So there'd be this box with a rough scrawling on it and the tail hanging down. And it kind of like people like to leave the toilet paper so the next person can, can, can use it. But this was the one where I first heard Ewan McCall. It's uh, called The Four Loom Weaver. 
and I had a friend named Rob Loud who loved English songs and English singers and he uh, interrupted me studying one day because I went to the women's college for Harvard and he was a Harvard student. He says, Peggy, you've got to hear this. You have to hear this. And he took me away to his, his room and uh, put this record on. And it had Ewan McCall singing the Four Loom Weaver. I'm a Four Loom Weaver. And it was the weirdest singing I'd ever heard in my life. I couldn't figure out why Rob liked it, because I hated it. I thought it was awful, and I couldn't understand a word of it. Uh, but this was a wonderful collection. This kind of thing that Alan did, uh, he never stayed in your life. Once he'd recorded you, bang, he was gone. Uh, and your your voice went to whatever archive he decided to put it into. I've now died and I've worn out my clothes. Clogs we hang on and all looms to wave on. Jack Elliott. Oh, bo bo bo, Jack Elliott. Oh. First time I ever saw Jack Elliott, he visited our house. And I would have been about 12, so that would have been about 1947, 48, somewhere along there. And he turned up with Guy Carawan. And these were two young men who were wanting to follow in Pete Seeger's footsteps and travel the country and find their own Woody Guthrie. And I remember Guy Carawan could wash his clothes, he could mend his clothes, he could make bread. And all Jack Elliott could do was, he was learning how to be Woody Guthrie. You know? All he did was sit around and bring his hat down over his head. and do it. So I remember Jack Elliott. I do remember him. Yeah. He's actually quite a good singer, but uh, I think it would, have, it would have been interesting to see what he was like if he wasn't trying to be Woody Guthrie. Oh, let's see what else. Baby, let me by the San Francisco Bay. The ocean liners have gone so far away. Didn't mean to treat us so bad. Best gal I ever have had Said goodbye, like to make me cry